So far we have refactored just the event list, but we still have to do some changes to deal with uh, editing our records, deleting them and adding new ones, okay? Before doing that, I want to show you something interesting. So I want to log the events object. So console.log events. So I can show you how does it look like. So back to our app. Let's inspect the element and let's see what's in the console. So we have our items from zero to six and then we have a few methods, dollar dollar added, dollar dollar error and so on. We won't see all of these methods in this section, but we'll take a look at a few ones. So now let's refactor the create event. And it's really, really easy guys. So instead of returning HTTP post, we're going to return events dot dollar add and inside the add as a parm we will pass the event that we have provided to our function okay and that's the first thing so now we're going to add an event in our application under add event and we'll call it test event firebase okay event firebase a random date location blah blah, blah email at webyourmind.com and the price is 200 euro. I'm not going to submit that. Let's minimize this. Sorry, let's put that on the side and let's open again our Firebase. So see what happens when I click on submit. Submit. You see that this new item with green appears. Event added successfully and there's an automatic generated ID. But the ID we are using for display purpose is inside our element. So we can expand it and we'll notice that we have a category, a date, a description, an email, a location, a price, but we have no ID because the ID is empty and that's because it was managed inside our ngmock. So for now, let's do something just like event.id equals events dot length plus one okay it's not the best because we see why but no worries because we're going to change this id to be something like more order or we're simply going to use the generated key which is a real id it's not just a numeric one so let's leave it like that for now and inside our app we can either add a new parm we can call it ID and for now we call it to be eight. So you see, it's automatically updated. But now I want to refresh and add a new one. I just type random stuff in here. This is 15, 10, 0, 1, location we don't care. Webyourmind.com as usual, 100 and submit. My event has been added successfully and my new ID is nine, okay? This is fine so far, but when we remove an event, we might have weird IDs. So, okay, it's here and our ad works. Now, I want to show you another capability of Firebase and it's the real time. So imagine that on this side, we're opening the same application from a mobile phone, for example. So on the left side, I'm on my desktop and the left, at the right side that you're looking at, it's opened by another PC, okay? Another uh, device. So when I add a new event, sync event, sync location, location at whim.com 150 okay so i'm a user i'm going to create an event i submit that event and the other user that is looking at the list is seeing my the update in real time cool isn't it so you have a real-time application the user will receive the update anytime and keep in mind that if you don't have connectivity you still see the update on your side. So I'm the user when I have the events, I'll still be able to see that in my event list. 
and the second user will receive the update as soon as the fourth one is able to connect to the internet because the database will be synchronized as well. Now let's move back to our app and let's change the delete event as well. So I'll comment this wall, return HTTP post, okay? And I'm just going to do return events dot dollar remove. Dollar remove is what we use to delete an event and the parm is the event itself, okay? Finish. Back again to our fantastic application. It's taking shape now, right? So I click on delete, boom. And there's an error, converting circular structure to JSON. And I'm sure you know why. Well, if you remember in the events controller, we were deleting an event, but we were doing a, f a thing like resetting the array to the wall list without the event we just removed. We no longer need to do that. We just need to delete the event and that's all. So we'll get rid of the wall then function, or better, we'll get rid of the content of the then and we're just going to return. We no longer need to update the data, it's synchronized. So return, I refresh, manage events, I'll delete Sherlock Holmes, and boom, it's automatically removed. What happens on the Firebase side? On the Firebase side, when we remove an event, look what happens. This becomes red for a second and boom, it's gone and we can delete all of them, one by one. So we have, a, in how long? Two minutes, we have updated both the add function and the delete function, and it's all in real time. The last one we have to do is the edit function. So back to our event factory once again, for the last time, our update event was returning this promise, but we're going to get rid of that. So we will comment that out. What we're going to do is return events dot dollar save and we'll pass the event itself. And that's done. Each one of these functions I'm showing you returns a promise. So we don't need to change anything on the controller side other than dealing with what happens after the promise is returned. So let's look at the update. Again, we were doing this self event list equals data, we'll just type returned, and that's done. So does it work? Let's see. I'll open the Firebase again, I want to show you what happens on the right side, and let it, the Bruno Mars event to be just Mars, okay? So uh, Bruno Mars is located in our element number four, so I'm expecting that this name will change to just Mars. Will it happen? So let's click on save and boom, Mars, events, number four. It's highlighted so I can see immediately what happens. So guys, in a few lessons, we have completely transformed our application into a real-time app. If you have any questions, feel free to post a discussion and I'll be available to help you out.